Hey, how's it going? So, quick video for you today. There's something on Promobile wheelchairs that I never really gave a second thought to. Maybe you haven't either, but it's really interesting the way it works. I'm talking about these swingaways. It allows the joystick to flex in either direction, and it keeps pointing straight. How do these things work? I never gave it a second thought. I don't know why. Um, I had one a while back, actually probably about a year ago, and it had gotten a little bit loose, and when it was in the straight position like this, it had quite a bit of movement to it. So I took the thing apart, and I was like, oh, there has to be adjustments. I was looking at the bottom, there's assorted screws and things like that. I've got another one here that's not attached to an armrest. But yeah, it's a pretty interesting concept. Now, once again, I'm a little bit late to the party here because Permobile has a new version of this. I do not have one of them. I'm assuming it's a very similar concept because these are actually pretty overbuilt. You'll see once we get the covers off. But the new ones are about one half to maybe about one third the height. So this thing is like maybe an inch tall. The new ones are like half an inch or something like that. To be honest, they look kind of flimsy, but uh, I don't have a frame of reference because I don't have access to one of those chairs. So we're gonna take this one apart at least and show you what's going on inside here. I've been wanting to make this video for a while. Actually, it's been about a year or so. And the only reason I didn't is because I wanted to get a hold of one of the new ones. But I figured some video is better than no video and we can make an addendum if necessary. So I'm sure you've seen these things before. They, uh, they have this mounting rod here. This goes into the armrest, like so. There's a bracket that holds this bar. You can adjust the length. You can move this bracket up and down. There's sort of some tracks under the armrest that uh, let you position it where you want. And then usually the mounting plates have a few different positions so you can mount it in different places. They're super adjustable. And then there's this random knob here on the bottom. That sort of changes the tension or adjusts how hard it is to swing the thing away. The tighter you turn this knob, the more difficult it is to move this thing. But I've got one here that came off of some other chair, so let's take this thing apart real quick and uh, see what's going on. First off, if you look close here, we've got uh, a couple of hex bolts on the top here that hold these two parts on. and. If you look really close, there's sort of some teeth inside here that sort of lock it together. So when you tighten down this screw, it's not just two metal plates on top of each other, it's actually got a little bit of grip to it. So let's pop this off here and see what's going on. These screws are pretty long and uh, they're a little bit difficult to remove. Okay, world's longest screw. So there's an interesting little uh, sandwich here that uh, goes into this. First off, we have the bracket that goes into the armrest on the chair. Then there's this little slotted piece that fits inside here. And on the back of it, it has these teeth that I was talking about. These two keyed sections here lock into place on this so it doesn't rotate. And then these teeth right here interface with the teeth on top of this. What that allows to happen is these snap into place and they're much more likely to stay in position. So when you tighten the bolt down, these teeth are actually uh, what's doing the gripping as opposed to just two flat metal surfaces. The other side is actually similar and I'm going to keep these parts organized so I don't get them mixed up. Let me get this other half off of here real quick. Oops. Okay, that's really tight. Um. Hang on, this might require power tools. It looks like this screw goes into a plastic housing here. Now maybe I'm doing this incorrectly, but um, yeah, we're just gonna do this. I'm gonna try and hold on to this so it doesn't rotate around. There we go. And there's a similar setup here. We've got the metal plate with the slots, the little top cap that's also keyed, and the same tooth, tooth, teeth, whatever, uh, arrangement here that holds everything together. So you ready? Let's look inside. It's actually um, very simple and uh, robust. Robust, robust, robust. This plastic just kind of clips in place around the edge. T 
Ta-da! It's a chain drive. How cool is that? I'm gonna reassemble this side of it here so I can easily turn it. Yeah, check it out. So we've got a couple of shafts here that have teeth and then we have this chain. And the chain moves and interfaces with the teeth on the front here. So as you turn and swing the thing away, it keeps the angles the same. Isn't that cool? I think the idea here uh, with this thickness is to keep the torsional bending like this so it doesn't bow to a minimum. But in theory, it could be done with a much thinner setup as well. And if you look down inside here, we've got uh, some little spring-loaded detents. As I turn this, you should see that little wheel kind of pop back out of place and see we've got a little notch right there that it locks into. And that's what holds this plate in place. We've got springs on both sides here that do that. There you can kind of see both of those things operating. So yeah, when I first took one of these apart I was not expecting that. It seems really cool. But I think since we have this apart we might as well completely tear down the rest of it. We've got a cover on the top here with some screws, cover on the bottom, and then there's that block in the middle that I'm assuming has a spring in it. So let's tear this thing down a little bit further. This kind of reminds me of one of those things that might go sproying when I take it apart. And little tiny parts and springs will go flying everywhere. But I think removing this half of it might give us access to look down in here without everything flying apart. We shall soon find out. And it looks like all the screws have Loctite on them. I think some of these might have to, some of these parts might have to come off here. Ah, uh, yep, we gotta take off these little plugs here as well. I'm really curious now to see inside the new ones and uh, see what they look like. By the way, if you have a permobile chair with one of the new style ones, uh, leave a comment and let me know if uh, it's any better or worse or whatnot than these old style ones. All right, let's get this cover off. Yeah, so there you go. Check it out. We've got our two little spring-loaded rollers here, one on each side, and they press into the detents that are on these. You can see right there is the detent. There's our spring-loaded shaft and roller. Same thing here on the top. And you can see our chain drive teeth here on both sides. So these are held on with roll pins. And interesting, there's little slots here in the back. You can see where those roll pins uh, poke through. Oh yeah, and they also have the same slots on the top as well. So here's the adjustment mechanism I was talking about. If you look down inside here, you can see this little semi-round thing that's sticking out here on each side. There's a screw here on the bottom, down inside. I believe you loosen these two up and then turn that screw, and that adjusts the position of this plate here. And that plate will turn and put tension on the side of this chain, and that's how you adjust the slack in the system. So it's a big oblong thing with round edges that just rides on this chain. There you can see it better. So this thing just turns and presses against the chain, and that's how you get more tension in this thing. It's really cool. It seems like a fairly complex design, but at the same time, it's also pretty simple. I mean, we got a bunch of custom machine parts here, like this big aluminum block and the springs down inside there. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's take this apart a little bit further. I'm curious how the spring works. I don't know if it goes all the way through or if these things are held captive, uh, but these springs are strong. I can barely, I can barely get these to move by hand. So yeah, let's keep digging here. Actually, before we take this thing apart further, I'm gonna show you how this little adjustment mechanism works. So you loosen up these two screws right here. Then if you look down inside here, there's another screw, and you'll put your Allen key down in there. And now with those two uh, screws loose on the back and our Allen key going in like this, you can see that this little piece will rotate. And that's how you change the tension on the springs. 
Now I loosen these things all the way. I would assume you want to give them just a tiny bit of tension. There we go. And then get your Allen wrench in here. So as you turn it, it actually kind of stays in place. There we go. Now I can let go of it and it stays. And then when you find the correct tension, you'll just tighten these two down. And you're good to go. So this is actually a lot more interesting than I realized. Last time I had one of these apart, I did not go nearly as in-depth and I didn't look at the spring mechanisms or anything. All I cared about was getting the chain tension adjusted. I didn't even really notice these uh, little detent things with rollers. So once again, I'm kind of learning with you guys. I'm going to hold one finger on here to keep this from flying across the garage. Alright, now I'm going to try uh, this is probably going to be a bad idea. Try and hold this with one hand. There we go. Ah, sure enough. So the hole goes all the way through this thing, and looks like they've got uh, they got some grease on here. Yeah, and we just got a spring inside there. Um. Let's see, gross. I'll set this over here. And yeah, there we go. So the hole's drilled all the way through. We've just got a big spring in the middle. And then these two little plungers just go in on both sides and press against the spring in the middle. That's really cool. Oh, check it out. So yeah, sure enough, here's our adjustment screws. These are the guys that you loosen up just a little bit. Oop. <laughs> and then uh, you just turn this basically and that adjusts your spring tension. And then when you get that in the position you want, you just lock these back down. And we've got access holes here in the bottom so we can get to all three of those components the two screws and the center adjustment thing. And now you can see our chain is just pretty loose on here. I'm assuming this just kind of pops through here. Oh yep, sure enough. Oh, our sprockets are made of plastic. I guess there's no reason they would have to be metal. This thing doesn't really see that much action, but uh, yeah, check it out. There it is. There's our little chain drive. Yeah, and there's our little detent that this roller interfaces with. And that's what locks it in place. Or at least uh, you have to give it, uh, give it a decent amount of push before it will uh, rotate around. So there you go. That's, uh, that's super interesting. The, uh, the setup is a lot simpler yet more complex at the same time than I thought. Um, I mean, coming up with a design, obviously there's a lot of uh, custom machined parts in here. Uh, like these plastic pieces, uh, I'm sure these are just injection molded. And then this thing is machined out of a block of aluminum, so that takes a little bit of work. But yeah, this is a really cool arrangement. Let's see if we can get this back in here now. All right, safety squints engage. There we go. All right. Here it is partially reassembled. So again, just to show you, we'll loosen up this adjustment mechanism here. Now there you can see in the middle, that's our tension adjustment. And then the actual mechanism operating. And then here's the little detents in action. So yeah, it's a pretty cool little device. I'm really curious now to see inside one of the newer ones I mean, they could very easily miniaturize a lot of this. These don't necessarily need to be as tall. 
this block doesn't need to be as high. In theory, they could uh, use some smaller plungers here and uh, you know cut down on the overall height quite a bit. And even if it's thinner, we've still got two pieces of metal that are sandwiched together. And whenever you have two flat pieces of metal, like for example, this one, I should be able to... Yeah, see, I can flex that by hand, you know, a decent amount. And if there was just one of these and your joystick was mounted on the end, that would be flopping all over the place. So I'm assuming on the new ones, they still have these two pieces of metal that are bolted together. And that sort of, well, triangulates is the wrong word, but it sort of braces everything up. So even if the two pieces do flex a little bit, when they're sandwiched together, they should hold together. And I would assume they're still using a chain. I don't think you could get away with a belt drive on this. I mean, maybe you can. I know like motorcycles and stuff have uh, belt drives for uh, instead of a chain, you know, for the final drive. But I don't know. It just seems a little bit... Well, actually, now that I think about it, I guess they could have a belt in there. I don't know. Um, anyways, I'm going to have to get a hold of one of those things. Or maybe one of you guys is bored and uh, you don't mind taking apart your chair and you could let me know. But yeah, I'm really curious now how the newer ones work since they're definitely a lot thinner. But yeah, um, short little thing. It's a thing you've probably seen quite a bit. Maybe you haven't thought about it. Maybe you have, but uh, yeah. Now you know what's inside of it. I think we're going to call that good for now. Um, let me know if you have any questions. And I'm going to reach I'm going to reach out to some people. And Permobile, if you're watching, um, fire up your alt account and comment down below. Let me know uh, if you know what's going on inside the newer ones. I'm really curious. If not, um, I'll probably just have to acquire one and make an addendum to this video. So yeah, there you go. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. It's been uh, illuminating for me, uh, hopefully for you as well.